And this is our complete lineup for Sunday on One. And we begin Sunday evening with Ian Gore and Songs of Praise. Hello, there's only one proper way to see the home of the helicopter. Yeovil stands among the gentle hills on the borders of Somerset and Dorset. It looks like an ordinary market town with all the industries related to farming that you might expect. One traditional speciality here for years has been the manufacture of leather, which is exported throughout the world. But you can't be here for long without feeling that the skies are absolutely buzzing with helicopters. Not only are they built here, but the Royal Navy also trains pilots here. So, Yeovil is a mixture of ancient and modern. But at the heart of the town stands the medieval church of St John the Baptist. Today, we'll be meeting people whose experiences reflect both the suffering and the joy that's at the very heart of this Palm Sunday. But we start in a spirit of expectant celebration with a hymn that welcomes Jesus, All Glory, Lord and Honour. On the first Palm Sunday, the Bible tells us that Jesus rode triumphantly into the city on the Jerusalem version of Domino here. The story simply says it was a young animal, so at the ripe old age of 17, I don't think Domino would really seriously contend for that honour. To retrace the Palm Sunday story, we need do no more than look a bit more closely at St John's Church, which locals call the Lantern of the West because of its windows. Jesus' Last Supper with his friends is a familiar theme for windows and pictures. But here in Yeovil, there's a particular poignancy. Here in this window, Judas, the disciple who betrayed Jesus, is marked out from all the others by his black halo. Jesus was taken away to be interviewed and put on trial. He was scourged and whipped by his captors. And then finally, on Good Friday, came what seemed like the end. He was forced to carry his own cross to Golgotha, the place where he would be killed. Mary, Mary, Mary. 
Upton resigned from their jobs and moved house in order to open up their home to teenagers in need. I'd been a headmaster for 10 years before we came here and uh, it was one particular night that God spoke to us directly and said we were to leave what we were doing and do something a bit different um, and it was through prayer and talking to one or two people that we, we discovered really over quite a period of time that we were to look after what we found in the scripture as refugees uh, which really meant we were going to look after people who hadn't got anywhere to live or family to be with and so on. Tell me how this house differs from a normal house. Probably just in that it's larger, um, everything's done on a larger scale than in a normal family. There are ten of us here at the moment, there's times I feel I could do with a register to tick them off as they go count them back in again at night to make sure we haven't lost any. The evening meal is the time when everybody's back, so we share that and find out what everyone's been doing. Preparing the meal beforehand, people trickle back in and come and chat in the kitchen, and that's often a, a very important time yeah. to relate one to one. Four marks. Mm -hmm. Oh, well done. Mrs. Why are you pleased about that? As a headmaster, one was expected to be the authority figure. Uh, here, being the authority or the law doesn't really uh, go down very well. Um, I'm really just the dad, the father of the, of the family. We actually get a lot of satisfaction uh, because we see people change, uh, but we don't actually do it for that reason. Uh, we do it simply because God asked us to do it. We don't expect anything back. Uh, but it's good when people do respond and they, they actually feel uh, part of what we're doing. So how is what happens in this house reflected in the hymn that you've chosen? Our lifestyle is based on prayer and so we've chosen a prayer which is uh, to do with God restoring things. Restore, O oh Lord, the honour of your name uh, is our prayer really for Yeovil but particularly for our own family.
Beth Farrington's husband, Dave, was the vicar of a group of nearby villages. Five years ago, he died of cancer. How important at the time of your husband's illness were the prayers of others? For ourselves, we have actually found it quite difficult to pray. But we were very much conscious of the number of people who were praying for us and with us. And what about the fact that the prayers on one level just didn't work? We'd thought about this before when my husband was first ill. In fact, he had preached on the um, three men in the fiery furnace from the Old Testament story just before he was ill, pointing out that they, they knew that their God could save them from the fiery furnace, but that even if he didn't, they would still praise him. And we believed God was able to heal, but even if he didn't, then we would still trust him. Obviously, we're, we're not immune because we're Christians from having bad things happen but at the same time I do believe God makes a new way through for us it's almost as if life has a plan A we, we think it's going to be like plan A and then something happens but God has another plan for us from what you've been through what would you say to somebody who's going through a similar experience at the moment taking one day at a time is a very good way to to go about things to begin with then I would say that I do believe that God cares about us. And though many people find this hard to believe when they're suffering, we have to take it on faith, but he does care. And Jesus himself experienced great suffering. So that when we turn to him and say, I can't take any more of this, we know we're talking to, to someone who has experienced that feeling. In fact, the whole theme of praise is in the hymn that you've chosen. Yes, it is. I've chosen Alleluia, Sing to Jesus. It's been a favourite of mine for a long time. A great hymn of praise to Jesus and reminding us that he's always with us.
In 1895, James Petter, who ran an ironmongery in Yeovil, designed and built a vehicle driven by an internal combustion engine of one horsepower. That single event was to have an unsurpassed impact on the town. At the outbreak of the First World War, the Petters placed the entire resources of their new foundry at the disposal of the government and began to make what were popularly known as flying machines. And now, nearly a hundred years later, that spirit of pioneering technology continues to flourish. The Westland Aviation Group is now the single largest employer in Yeovil and their helicopters are found all over the world. But the town's links with helicopters is not confined to building them. Some five miles away at Yeovilton, there's a naval centre where many of the pilots who took part in the Falklands conflict were trained. It's impossible to number the lives saved by these extraordinary machines and the dexterity of the people who handled them. Many of the people here in the church work in the helicopter industry. And now we're going to join together to sing a modern hymn that brings us back to our theme of Palm Sunday. I should actually say it's two hymns because we're joining together You Are the King of Glory and Make Way, Make Way for Christ the King. Hilda Brown organises a weekly lunch club. Nine years ago, her husband Richard had a stroke, which left him without speech. I have often asked myself why this happened to Richard when he was such a Christian. Always has been. And then I think, well, it must be that he's here to set an example to others. He goes to Summerlin's Hospital for Physiotherapy and he's um, welcome there. He's oh, always so cheerful. Yeah. They never need to ask who's coming along the corridor. He goes along singing, although not being able to speak. And it's great therapy for the rest of the patients in the hospital. And he does spread light and shine wherever he goes. Richard is a marvellous patient, and although he may be in pain sometimes, 
He never grumbles. <laughs> I started a luncheon club for the elderly in St. Peter's Church Hall, and that was um, about 12 years ago. The pleasure of the senior citizens coming to the lunch club is unbelievable. You only have to walk in the door, and the laughter and the cheerfulness is a pleasure. I've always been interested in senior citizens. And it's one of the joys I love doing. I've chosen my hymn, Praise to the Holiest in the Height, because I feel we've got a lot to praise God for, for all the wonderful things that he's given Richard and I in our lifetime. Angela Kingsbury's daughter, Grace, was born with a serious heart condition. Less than four months ago, at the age of three, she had major surgery. Her condition weakened her a great deal, and when she was a little baby, she found even sucking quite difficult to, to do. So therefore, she didn't thrive at all. Um, she didn't take all her milk, so she obviously didn't put on weight, um, which was very distressing. And uh, later on, when she eventually began to walk, because she didn't walk until she was nearly two, she, up until that time she would just roll around the room. Um, she was very, very breathless just walking across the room and would frequently go blue, which was also very distressing. Eventually I turned this anxiety over to Jesus, because it's the only thing you can do really when you're very fretful and very fearful. How did you go about that? Well, it was obviously through prayer. Um, it's just one day in my personal devotions that I just came to the conclusion that this was not possible possible for me to cope with and um, really I just had to hand this over the responsibility for Grace's life to to God. The actual day of that operation in Bristol must be very difficult for you. 
It was very difficult. Um, we weren't being unrealistic. Of course, there was uh, a ten percent ten chance of failure. But um, sometimes God's asked us to face the things we fear the most, and to face them with Him, and to go through them with Him. This feeling that He was in charge of her life, that if He had chosen to take her to heaven to be with Him, then I would have accepted that. How was she after the operation? After four days, she came off the ventilator, and after a week, she was allowed to stand up. And um, she immediately jumped. It was like she had such energy and such joy. The change in her is so incredible. She's running about, enjoying life, and just the ordinary things of life, like going shopping. A happy, normal child. It has been a strengthening experience in my relationship with God. I feel now that I can trust Him. And that trust in God is really what your hymn is all about. Yes, it is. It's called "I Am Trusting Thee, Lord Jesus," which is a very personal response to Jesus, and it really sums up what my relationship with Him has been, not only for Grace's situation, but throughout my whole life. Sunday, you were welcomed into Jerusalem like a king, but you had chosen the way of the cross. As once more we prepare to follow the events of Good Friday and Easter, help us to understand more about your self-giving love. Help us to be true to our calling, that we may take up our cross daily and never be diverted from the way you have chosen for us. So may we share the joy of doing our Father's will. Amen. Amen. Christ crucified draw you to himself so that you may find in him a sure ground for faith, a firm support for hope, and the assurance of sins forgiven. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.